Information is coming in of an emergency off the Somerset coast. A ship is floundering and conditions at sea are so bad that the lifeboat can't be launched from Lynmouth. As a result, local men are dragging the lifeboat across the steepest hills in the West Country to Porlock, 14 miles away, where they should be able to put to sea. It was one of the most remarkable rescue operations in the history of the lifeboat service, and today, exactly 100 years on, they've been reenacting it. It was cold, windy and wet in Lynmouth early this morning, but that's exactly what it was 100 years ago today, when the coxswain of the Lynmouth lifeboat, Jack Crocombe, made a momentous decision. There's a vessel in distress out there to Porlock. We launched from Porlock Weir. He decided to take the Lynmouth lifeboat, the Louisa, on a 15-mile journey through the night to go to the aid of a cargo ship drifting in force-eight gales in the Bristol Channel. Using a boat borrowed from a museum on the Isle of Wight and a team of cart horses, 50 volunteers today re-enacted that journey. Hundreds of people from the southwest and further afield put up with the poor conditions to watch the team pull out of Lynmouth. It's wonderful. I think it's super. Yeah. It's worth coming out in this weather. I think they would have been very pleased to think that, you know, their efforts had been rewarded by such a turnout. It's lovely, isn't it? We've been talking about it for several days and uh, they're fascinated. We've been looking back, looking at uh, old records and so on and finding out lots about it. And I think we've all enjoyed finding out about it. The reenactment kept closely to the original script, although for safety reasons, a tractor had to be used in places. A century ago, the horses and crew got to the top of Countersbury Hill, a one in four climb. But the weather was so bad that only the 13-man crew and the seven-man launching party continued through the night. The weather was nearly as bad on Exmoor today as the reenactment team made their way towards Porlock. Unlike their predecessors, however, they did benefit from a brief respite from their exertions halfway to their destination. Just keep going, basically. It's going to get hard as we get up to um, Colburn up there because there's quite a hill coming up and you've got to take the weight off the horse. But it's, it's bad enough walking, but when you've got to pull a bit as well, it's, it's quite hard. They're about two-thirds of the way through now and the weather's brightened up considerably. Very different from 100 years ago when they set off across Exmoor, buffeted by gale force winds all the way. Today's volunteers also benefited from modern roads. A century ago, the lifeboat crew at one point had to drag the Louisa on skids because there wasn't enough room between the houses for boat and carriage. I think the, ever the people that are down here in Porlock, uh, we're this afternoon to welcome us is, uh, is evidence of the uh, commitment that the, the village has put behind this, this celebration. <laughs> This marked the end of today's journey, but that wasn't the end for the crew of 1899. They then helped to escort the stricken cargo ship to South Wales, something today's volunteers would find it even more difficult to emulate. Philip Lote, BBC News West, Porlock. Incredible story of determination and courage yeah. there. And extraordinary the work that lifeboat people do today. Actually, if News West had been on the air 100 years ago, you'd be 125 <laughs> now. Yeah, thank you. Before the weather... Uh... Back in 1899, the seas were too rough for the Lynmouth lifeboat to go to the aid of a stricken ship. So lifeboatmen hauled the three-and-a-half-ton vessel miles across the Somerset moorlands to reach calmer waters. Today, the epic event was reenacted, down even to the atrocious weather. A call for help that could not go unanswered. Today, in the teeth of another gale, the village of Lynmouth breathed life into a maritime legend. The night when lifeboat coxswain Jack Crocombe led his crew on what seemed an impossible rescue mission. Fifteen souls on a crippled cargo ship couldn't survive the storm. Unable to launch from Lynmouth, the villagers dragged their lifeboat 14 miles across Exmoor to reach her. The seas were so horrific here. The waves were breaking over the Rhenish Tower behind us. and. Uh, it was impossible to launch anything at Lynmouth, but uh, the weather at Porlock behind the hill was a little bit easier and they felt they could launch there. A century ago, every able-bodied villager mustered to inch the lifeboat a thousand feet uphill to the moors. Today, 60 local men and four working horses had a taste of what their ancestors had faced, bending to their task in driving rain. Jack Crocombe's crew had no food or drink throughout the 10-hour journey. 
they had to do it in the dark. Of course, they had no lights or anything, or no flashlights like they have today, you see. And the old lanterns that <laughs> blew out every time they tried to do anything. The three-and-a-half-ton lifeboat, identical to Lynmouth's own, reached Porlock Weir on time with some mechanical assistance. It was here that Crocombe's crew summoned their last reserves of energy to stage a successful rescue. Stamina which this 20th century community found difficult to imagine. It was bad across the top of the moor, but um, yeah, it's, it's been enjoyable, but it doesn't bear anything to what they did years ago. A new painting will help Lynmouth pass on its oddest moment. Tonight's celebrations will no doubt include a toast to the man whose leadership inspired his village to heroism. Robert Hall, BBC News, North Devon.